All right, everyone, welcome to the Rational Independent. This is Nathan Lindorf. Today's article, we are going to check out Vice News. Texas agency threatens to fire people who don't dress consistent with their biological gender. Apparently, the Texas Department of Agriculture's mission is to promote production, promote production agriculture, consumer protection, economic development, and healthy living. Call me an old-fashioned small government, small L libertarian for a minute. Do we really need a Department of Agriculture? Do we really need a thousand and one proliferating government departments populated with people whose job it is to push paper and try and hedge the behavior of market participants in ways to kind of nudge them in the direction that the government wants them to go? I'm a little skeptical of whether or not we get any actual value from such an agency. In support of that skepticism, we have this agency, now their head has put forth this controversial policy that they distributed a mem memo, excuse me, the commissioner, Sid Miller, distributed a memo to employees informing them they're required to dress in a manner consistent with their biological gender. So this is now a tempest that we all need to manage. This is now this horrible travesty. This, this paragraph in particular really kind of encompasses the left's framing and perspective on this. The memo, which is clearly aimed at transgender and gender non-conforming employees, goes on to say that repeated violations of the policy will be subject to, quote, corrective action, unquote, up to and including being fired. According to the observer, one employee who spoke with the observer said the policy feels like it threatens the safety of anyone who doesn't conform to the binary dress code. Okay, let's take this paragraph and, and unpack it for a minute. This is a memo. This is not a threat. And the use of safety language infuses this conversation with an emotional charge that is not warranted. And it makes it more difficult to think clearly about this and more difficult to come to a reasonable resolution. The, the factual basis is that there is a threat of corrective action. What that means, this is government speak. This is a government agency. What this means is you might be put on leave, you might be penalized, you might be written up, you might eventually be fired, although I'm skeptical of that because one of the most permanent things in the world is a government employee. It is so difficult to actually fire government employees. Even those caught doing crimes still don't get fired. I know that's a generalization, but the principle stands. So I'm doubtful that this is some kind of immediate, urgent crisis. The interesting layer, the interesting layer to me, to all of this, is that it doesn't appear that there's any objection to a dress code in general. It is a little odd to me that Vice News does decide to go ahead and dive into the details of the dress code for this Department of Agriculture in Texas. Appropriate attire for women as defined by the memo includes not showing excessive cleavage and says skirts must be within four inches of the knee. However, pants and Western apparel are allowable. The expectations for men, on the other hand, are essentially to wear button-down shirts and socks. According to the memo, those shirts must be tucked in. I don't work in the public sector. I work in the private sector. My company has a dress code. It talks about what kind of shoes I should wear. It talks about whether I should wear socks. It talks about if I can wear shorts or if I have to wear pants. It talks about the type of shirts that I'm allowed to wear. What is considered acceptable professional dress? Every role in every company has a standard of dress that goes with it. Setting aside the whole gender question, some people are gonna push against a dress code. They need to express their individuality or they can't be bothered to put on socks or whatever. Absolutely baffles me that in a professional environment, you would have to tell men, you need to wear socks because I would never have to be told that because that's a behavior I would never choose. But since we're dealing with humanity as a whole, I understand some people have very different priorities and they really, really don't want to wear socks. So people are going to push back on the dress code individually. And I love the way that their vice is trying to frame this in a sexist bent by saying that the women's dress code is more constraining than the men's. The simple truth of it is women are actually given more flexibility, not less. If you want a truly uniform, non-sexist standard work environment, then you make the standard the same for everybody and you say, button down polos, tucked in, pants, socks, shoes, done. 
congratulations. You now have a dress code that both genders have to conform to, except now you have a bunch of women who are going to be furious they can't wear a skirt or cute strappy shoes or whatever. Like I said, there's several different ways to do to, to deal with this particular article. So I apologize if I wander a little bit. It is important to mention and is important to clarify business environments, professional environments should be able to enforce a dress code. If they don't, they're going to disrupt their work environment. If someone brings their stinky shoes or their stinky feet with no socks, props them up on the table in the middle of a meeting and disrupts the focus and disrupts the decorum and disrupts the working environment, you are going to disrupt the productivity of the office. That's the purpose of a dress code is to minimize distractions from outlier deviant behavior. People who are so far out of the norm that their behavior is distracting and disruptive. That's the purpose of a dress code. If I am a man and I dress like a woman, that can be disruptive to the, to the professional environment. There's a legitimate argument, argument to be made that if you are dressing outside of your gender norm, you are doing so in order to gain attention and to make a point. You want to express yourself through your choice of clothing. And in certain contexts, you should be allowed to do that. But all of us make sacrifices about how we want to express ourselves individually when we choose to join a professional environment. We choose to use different language than we do at home. We choose to talk about different topics. We choose to focus on different things. We choose to put and subordinate our own needs behind the needs of the group because you want to accomplish the mission of the organization. How many times have you been in a professional environment where something has happened that it has infuriated you? And instead of exploding, you showed restraint, you held it in, and then you waited till you got home or you waited till you were out with your friends and you talked through your frustrating emotions about that circumstance. You did that in order to further the professional environment, in order to create an environment that can be more productive and if everyone gets to just willy-nilly act in their own particular way, whatever's important to their subjective perspective. If you want an environment where everyone gets to do whatever they feel like, you have a playground. You don't have a professional environment and you won't be productive. Now in the government, maybe you don't need to be productive. I genuinely doubt the effectiveness or productivity of most of the people that work in the Department of Agriculture. You could probably accomplish most of their goals with 20% of their current workforce. People who push the broad social acceptance of gender deviance have an agenda. This article is written with the express purpose to make it appear reasonable that men should be able to wear women's clothes in the workplace and women should be able to dress as men in the workplace for, their, for the virtue of their own feelings, regardless of the disruptive impact on the, on the professional environment. I think that's foolish and short-sighted. I think it's selfish. If you have a culture that puts the self first and makes that the prime driver of social decisions, of cultural trade-offs, you are going to, you're going to fail to build any kind of cohesive organization. You're going to fail to be productive. You're going to fail to be competitive in the marketplace. It's going to have ripple effects beyond what you can believe. Now, let's take it away from the trans conversation and the gender non-conforming conversation for a question, uh, for, for a moment. As we're looking at this as an issue, it is just as disruptive for a man to dress like a slob, to show up in a cutoff tank top, raggedy jean shorts, flip flops with ratty toenails that haven't been clipped in a couple of years and fungus on his feet, smelling like old boot and walk into an inv a meeting and put his feet up on the desk and try and have a professional meeting. That's a problem. And you fix that problem by setting a dress code. That way you're not singling any person out. You're saying we are all going to keep to a certain objective standard. It is equally, if not more disruptive for an attractive young woman to dress provocatively in a professional setting. Male brains are visual. Male brains are keyed to engage on visual input. 
let's just put it this way. It is very disruptive to men who are trying to focus on a productive task to mix into that the visual stimulus of someone who is incredibly sexually attractive and dressed in a provocative way. As it says, excessive cleavage, short skirts, whatever you want to call it. Should women be able to dress any way they want? Mm, no. Should men be able to dress in whatever way they want? No. All of us have to make sacrifices from where we might dress in our personal lives to where we dress in a professional environment in order to enable the organization to function with a minimum of disruption and distraction. That principle is sound. If I were the agriculture commissioner of Sid Miller, in response to pushback on this memo, I would put out, not just a memo, but I would put out a survey to the people in, in the organization. And I would say, we have two choices. We can keep it as is, or we can adopt a gender neutral dress, or we can, or we can adopt a gender neutral dr dress code. Everyone is going to be provided monogrammed, you know, button down polos with Department of Agriculture on them. And everyone wears the polos. Everyone wears slacks of some kind. Everyone wears socks and shoes. That solves the, but we're picking on gender non-binaries because you're not actually picking on them. What you're trying to do is create a work environment that is focused and productive. And people who want to deviate from the norm and disrupt that are going to feel targeted because their behavior is out of line with what the organization needs. That's my Reddit rant for today. Good luck out there.